Hi guys, it's the T Project. I'm back with another video today. We're doing an upgrade today on the uh, head unit for the CD70 Navi. I've got all the bits for it there. It's the AUX version, so we'll be putting that into the car. So yeah, I've done these before on the last Victors I've owned. I just need it because I've got no way to listen to my music other than listen it or wherever it's gone. I've got like a Bluetooth FM like speaker, <laughs> Bluetooth like device. Sorry, I'm really full of cold, so I'm doing this on a day where I don't really feel that great and it's quite warm. <laughs> I'll try my best not to die on camera. So yeah, um, hopefully it's easy. So basically before I start, what's gonna to happen today is it'll be replaced with this screen. I'm gonna give it a clean up, obviously. The screen isn't damaged, that's just really dirty. I'll give that a good wipe. And the fascia on this is a little bit different to the one I've currently got. Like, notice this bit here is a bit thicker than the one we have on there. Um, but you can actually dismantle this, so I'll be keeping my my vents behind. Um, I'm literally just gonna take off the screen and the back of the, the front surround and just pop it on there. Obviously the screen's bigger, it's a colour one, and it has aux in. Now, yeah, I could have got the phone function, but they're quite expensive when you find them and you need the module which goes like down here um, and some other bits, but I'm quite happy having the tray with the aux part in, which I've got, and the RGB cable there, that's for the unit to the screen. And the only other thing I'm a bit worried about, and this is more of like a vector thing, so it's not like on most cars, I'm not sure if the loom in my car has, behind this, the connector for... Everything's falling out. I'm not sure if my car has the loom for this, so it's fine. If I don't have the loom for this, I'll either take the end off this and manually put it into the quad lock, or I've already got a quad lock to aux port. It would just mean that there'd be no point in having this, which is convenient and looks nicer, but you know. We'll go from there. So basically, to start with, we're gonna take off this strip and behind the strip, there's a couple of um, screws just holding it in place. I think there's four, as you can see on there. Four of them and the rest of it's just popped off easily with enough force. And once I've got access to that, this is being screwed off and you can just take it off and take it bit by bit. Um, but yeah, I'll stop the video and I'll start it once I've got it off. So as you can see guys, that pops straight off. Doesn't need much force to be fair, just a little tug from the glove box side. And then you've got access to your screws there, your foxes, just for the star ones. And once that's off, this whole thing comes out. Um, as for the actual head unit, all you need is a set of these. You can pick these up for about five at Halifords, or if you want to be uh, avoiding Halfords and saving a fiver, then you can use a screwdriver. And it's something small, anything small to put in both sides, uh, just so you can get the unit out itself. I hope you really appreciate this really drony and cold voice. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So next step, I'm going to unscrew these, pull it out, and see what we've got again. I was also going to mention is uh, when you're buying these units for the Vectras. Um, I mean, this is just to let you know um, if you have one and you're watching and you think they're doing it, it's best to get the screen and the unit together um just because they're paired as a unit whereas if you get a separate one so just say i wanted the color screen on my cd30 you can do that it will show your you know board computer stuff and range and whatnot but because it's not coming from the unit itself you'd need opcom or tech to to code it um i'm not sure if you need the car pass actually but all i know is it's plug and play if you've got them from the same vehicle which these are um so yeah i picked these up on facebook from a lad he's breaking one um i've actually got the headlights from him the ones i've just fitted uh, on the front i put the black sri ones on um which you can see now uh he sold me them and i just messaged him said have you got one of these available and he said i've actually got one with aux so i picked that up for him and ready to go right let's get the uh face plate off also noting for these uh you need a t20 it'll be a perfect fit for them um and that's pretty much all you need for the uh, dismantling of this. Right guys, that's come off fairly easily. Um, basically all you met with in this is like a quad, lock, a quad lock adapter. You just need like a flat head just on that little tab to push it down. It pushes down like quite easy and then this just flicks off and it just comes off straight, e straight away quite easily. And that's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, what I will be doing 
is because the vents are in good condition on my car, like these slats haven't broke, these basically um, can, slot our, can slot out of this one and I'll put them into these ones so I'm not losing my good vents. So, yep, that's off next. So the next we're gonna do is tackle the head unit itself with the audio keys. So guys, I just thought I'd uh, tell you how to basically remove this because it might seem like it's quite hard at first. Um, but basically all you need to do is, you need to make sure that these are basically pushed in as hard. There's a bit of a spring like in them when they're in. You get them in as hard as you can. Um, it's like obviously they won't get stuck so don't worry about that but once they're in around that kind of region once they're in you have two hands and you're pulling them outwards like that direction and that direction and you're just like wiggling it left and right and eventually it will pull out um it is on its way out now i just literally thought i'd stop and uh tell you how to do that so then you're not worried about breaking it or if it's not moving it can be quite stiff but you just got to kind of persevere so if you, as long as you wiggle it and then it should basically pop right out straight away Okay guys, there we go. That's the main artery of the uh, stereo system out. Now all you basically have is the quad lock, which there's kind of these tabs on the side. You can see that, you push them, there's one on either side, and then this kind of just rivets up on a hinge and it will pop right out of there. So don't worry about that. And this is just the antenna cable for the aerial. And yeah, that should be fine. Uh, you just basically have to pull that out. It might seem like it won't come out again, but you just need to kind of pry this tab up very slightly and it will pop off. So the next thing that we'll have to do is we'll have to get out the tray because we're going to need access to put that in. Um, I believe it'll be behind the aircon controls. So uh, I'm going to figure out a way to get that out. That might just pop out to be fair, but um, yeah, because I've never, the, I've never fitted the tray before. So this is first for me. I've only ever had to change that in the Navi and yeah we'll go from there <laughs> fingers crossed i don't break anything but once again i'll let you know how i do it guys right guys so i'm back i kind of skipped my help skipped myself ahead a little bit this just came out with a bit of force um so at first it felt like a bit difficult to pull i just basically grabbed it at the top bit there and gave it a good tug and i've just set it down by the side it saves me i don't want to clip it or anything so that's great i have the tray out underneath and uh that's sitting over there now now, upon looking behind my loom, I don't have a connector for the aux tray out of the quad lock. So what I've just done, basically, kind of got ahead of myself, was I had to go online and do a bit of searching to see what pins are needed um, for the additional cable I have. So this is one I just picked up on eBay years ago and actually just had it lying around. So I had a really big fiddle on with this tray. So this was the cable that came with it. Uh, obviously that went into that socket there and then this connection here would have gone into the one that's missing but I don't have that so I undid this out of that little um, aux like socket thing it just unscrewed there's like a washer nut and then all I've done is put that new cable through it and uh, connected it that way so that will lead I'll tidy it up because it needs to go in properly but that will lead to the quad lock and in the back of my quad lock, um, I've basically wired it into where it needs to go. On the CD70, it's um, ground, I think, pin 18 for the ground, and then 24 for left and 25 for right, um, which you can see on there. So the top right-hand corner is 17, then 23. So 24 and 25 is left and right. Uh, 18 is the ground. So, yep, yeah, I basically just had to do a bit of fiddling on with that. And that's what the forums have told me to do. And I think I remember it actually being the same when I did it years ago. But fingers crossed when I actually hook it all up, it's showing the AUX function. Um, because my unit's compatible. It's from the AUX unit anyway, and it's past 2007, which is the date there. Any unit over 2007 is uh, AUX fitted as standard, or at least compatible. So yeah, it definitely should work now. What I'll do next now is I'm gonna just kind of put the tray back, feed the wire away so it's not gonna kind of get stuck in the middle or anything. Um, and I'll show you it all working and back together in a second. Right, so done a bit of uh, tidying up with the wire. So the aux cable, which you can see wired in there, just tucked it down the back and fed it down the bottom end. So that can now go back into the tray. And there's the aux part. 
So I'll be able to pop that back in. I'll just pop in under nicely, pop this back in, and then we'll be working on getting the unit and the screen paired up. All right, so I'm actually gonna start with the screen, guys. Um, what I'll do first of all is get these vents out and then pop my uh, decent ones back in. These are quite easy. They're just basically clipped. As you can see in the top, there's two little uh, snap clips and on the side, there's these tiny ones. Now these are fragile. You've just got to pry them off very gently. So it's best to kind of unclip them from the top and then pry it like backwards. Um, and then they should just pop off easy. So we'll get this surround off and pop the new ones in. All right, guys, there we go. Looking good as new. And I've given the screen a good little wipe over just to get rid of the muck off. Fence back in with the proper uh, slats working as well. Um, just I'd rather have them back in than broken ones that look naff. So... Yep, this is basically ready to go. Um, basically, for the top, all we have is two uh, ports. You've got the main one. I'm guessing this is a power one. And um, um, probably for the board computer. And the RCA cable, which basically feeds to the CD70. I'm not entirely sure what these are actually for separately. I think I did know once over, but uh, it's been a while since I've actually like uh, checked it out. But I just do know that there's two cables for this one. It's a standard one up there connected to your car loom goes into the blue socket and then the rca cable which i have here that essentially goes into there and then that one goes into the back of the head unit so we'll get that hooked up and get that back in there we go guys back in nicely it's quite easy to install these you just push it in and make sure all the cables are in properly it isn't moving there's no plate oil so you just basically put the screws back in and then it'll be good to go. I've just made sure I've fed this side, this side of the RCA cable through because you're going to need it. So I've got everything now ready to uh, put back in to the, where is it? The CD70. So there's one thing I will point out that you will need in terms of the GPS antenna as well because I forgot to mention this. So on the back you have your aerial the RCA port and then this is your GPS antenna so if you've got a Vectra that already has the aerial base on the roof that supports uh, the GPS cable um, you just basically need to plug that into there it'll already be in your loom it'll be a blue cable but if you don't like I currently don't but uh, I'll be changing that soon you basically need to buy I think it's a tenner on eBay it's like a GPS cable um, it'll just plug straight into there and then all you need to do is feed it up through the back and you can have it either sitting in your glove box or in the corner my last car i just had it in the corner there i fed it up fed the wire around the back it's just a little square black block um, and that'll give you your gps um, signal so for now i won't have my sat nav um, gps signal but that's fine because i'll order one of the adapters and i'll fit it into the car okay guys main apart we'll get the um We'll get the main head unit in, get her hooked up, and hopefully she's uh, working. Okay, guys, there we go. She's all back in. Just a little bit of um, patience with the wires behind because you need to obviously get them all compacted in without any um, problems. So, yeah, she's in. Uh, she's flushed up quite nicely. I mean, when you remove these, you're never going to get an exact factory perfect fit. But, yeah, nothing too bad. A couple of marks from the previous person who's uh, took out the radio, which I'm a bit annoyed about that's just my ocd coming out but i'm happy with how she's gone in so literally last but not least i uh, just put the uh, dash trim back on and that is literally just a uh, quick push in uh, along the side just to get the uh, clips back in and we'll get that in and then it'll be the moment of truth so there we are guys the dash trim back on like i said just uh, pop back in place with the little clips and looking fresher Looking really fresh. Uh, I've got the aux with tray now, the Navi unit, which I'll need to get a nav disc for, um, as well as the GPS antenna and the screen with the vents. So, literally, a moment of truth. See if she fires up. Oh, there we go, brilliant. Awesome. So, yep, no CD, 35 miles, temperature's reading, uh, that's brilliant, that's exactly the range I had on the last one, so it's showing me that now, 
I need to see if the aux menu's there, and if it's there, I've been told that if it's visible, it'll work. It'll, it's wired properly, so here we go. Ah, oh, fantastic. There we go. I don't have an aux cable with me, <laughs> but I've been told, yeah, it wouldn't, it will not appear if you've wired it wrong completely. So I will have to test it regardless, um, but I'm happy that that's actually there as an option because it won't show up if there's incorrect wiring and it'll even tell you on the top here if there's an issue with the left and right channels and the uh, and the other bits but no nope, fantastic all the buttons work so there we go guys cd70 navi with the um the aux fitted in i'm really happy with how it looks it makes the car just look a bit more premium having a uh, a premium system put in so yep glad you uh, were here to join me so the inside's looking nice now it's gonna look nice i want to get some different seats eventually but that's the plan get some v uh, vxr recaros if i can find them but if not i'll probably get some sri leathers which are quite rare to find apparently so um yeah we'll see so there we go cd70 installed uh i'm sweating my balls off right now because it's about 24 degrees outside and i've got all doors closed and I really need a drink and my throat is killing me. So anyway, it's been good, it's been real. Thank you very much for joining me on this and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.